Welcome to Real Chicks Rock Presents Real Discussions. I'm your host for today, Michelle Dosbert, and I'm always excited. Today is Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. And we're working today, so, but for those of you that are celebrating, however you want to celebrate today, thank you. Go ahead, continue to do that. Um, but in the, if you want to hear us in the background, we are here. We're doing this today. Um, so we're happy that the weather is nice today. Yes, thank you, it was, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> because it's been unseasonably cold for the past two days and a couple of and some rain and yes. tornado watches and all kind of foolishness. Yes. And so today is a beautiful day in the A. Um, and we're trying to make light of um, before we actually get into today's topic, because today for me and for my guests, it's pretty, pretty serious. And so we're trying to, you know, smile and be positive about it. But um, today's topic is going to be kind of heavy for those that are listening, at least for me, because I have a lot of questions. But before we jump into that. Right. I want to thank all of the listeners and all of the new people that are checking us out today. Thank you so much. Let me give you a little background about what Real Chicks Rock is all about. So all about the empowerment of women. Yeah. And we do it through so many different ways and vehicles. Um, this particular platform has been my favorite lately um, where we sit and it's part of the media and we have guests and people that talk about different things that impact our communities. And I've had some artists and some Grammy nominated and Grammy winners here. So we're just really excited about that. Um, we're also about um, public speaking and mentoring. And then the other piece that's still dear to my heart too is the community service piece, yes. right? Yes. Um, and so today the topic is homelessness in Atlanta. And I think for some of you guys that know me, um, I really have been talking about the homeless situation for a couple of years. When I first birthed Real Chicks Rock a couple years ago, um, I aligned myself with the Atlanta Missions because I had liked the fact that they empowered the people that they had, the women in particular, um, to help them get a second chance at life, like rest reset, restart their life. So it wasn't just about you being homeless or displaced or whatever the case may be, but they were giving them the tools that they needed so that they could get back on their feet. And that's the empowerment piece right. that I really liked, and I appreciated that. And you know, not for nothing, um, there was homeless shelters, one in particular we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, but I just didn't see this mass abundance of homelessness that I'm starting to see over this past year or so ago. Yes. So today's topic is really important to my guest because my guest is Osborne Murray. Hi, Osborne. Hey, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you for joining us today. Um, Osborne is very grassroots in the community, in the neighborhood, battling, helping to provide resources for the homeless community. We met through Linda Osborne, Linda Osborne right? A me. Me. <laughs> right? Right, right, a mutual <laughs> person. And that's how it grows. You meet one person and they know some other great and dynamic people and you continue to learn and grow. Yes. And we had a conversation and I, I, he gave me a business card and I just, just was like, I'm interested. And I said, I think I want to have you on the show and we're going to kind of talk about this homeless state in, in Atlanta. So as I was saying, um, it has really started to like bloom in, in a manner that's undescribable. But before we get into that, Osborne, I want the people to know a little bit about you. So then it has, it makes sense when you share 
right. some of your experience in the work that you do. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, again, my name is Oswald Murray mm -hmm. III. I am actually recently retired from the military. Okay. And they, when you say retired, you have forms of retirement. Okay. But I'm medically retired. All right. So you think about what goes into that and you become helpless and stuff like that. So mm. be between the retirement and getting out, it made me, it was like stages into what I'm doing now. Okay. Um, at the time I had a broken neck, I had a stroke. Uh, this mom was broken in four places. I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk for like, you know, a year. Really? And then it was real serious rehab. Um, so from there, I looked at things differently. Mm. You know, you have to think about the um, the goodness in God right. and how he actually brought you back from where you were. Right. Because I was sitting in that bed many of nights thinking, why me? Right. And then it's like, well, apparently this is something I have to go through. Mm. And I'm very thankful that he brought me through it. Got you. So after I got through that, and oh, again, thanks to the Army for all the rehab and right, the services right, they gave right, for right. me. But after that, I got out, I saw, I came back to Atlanta, and I noticed, I was like, wow, that guy's homeless. And I noticed another, and mm. another, and mm. another. I was like, well, what are anybody, is anybody doing mm. anything about this? Mm. And it's like, well, no. Okay. From my eyes. But there were people doing stuff for okay. it. But, you know, so I'm not going to say that there was no one doing anything. Right. But, you know, you, you see, as you say, you see things and then you don't see right. things. Right. And you have people who say that they're doing stuff and then, but they're doing stuff behind the scenes. Yes. My thing is that basically I'm more of a grassroots, as you mm -hmm. say, person, boots mm -hmm. on the ground. Mm -hmm. If I see a, um issue, I try to tackle it. Head on. Right. Instead, if I see that it's 30 people down that need help, I'm going to try to get at least 60 pair of clothes. So they at least have two pair, two pairs. Oh. you know, wow. and shoes and things of that nature. Right. You know. So, so when you came back, you said you, when you came to Atlanta, what year was that? When did you realize there was a situation here? 2013. Okay. I was released January 2013 from the military. Okay. Um, I had already bought my house in 2008. I lived in it for a month and then I moved back in in 2013 after I got out. Okay. So as I'm going again, I said, well, I'm coming back to Atlanta. I love Atlanta. Right. You know, everyone, nice city. everyone's young. Hmm? I said it's a nice city. Yes, it is. It's insanely mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. You got so much stuff to do. And when, you know, you can meet this person, you can meet that person, connect, connect. And then again, mm -hmm. like I told you, I thought I was going to be the next, um, KC <laughs> from Jodeci. Yeah, it's going to be Jodeci. Come and talk to me. I you really know. thought you going to do that? I really thought I was going to do that. I was like, hey, I got to, I, got to, I can sing a little bit. I can put, um, you know, Jodeci. put something behind it, you know, maybe uh, a voice box or something ooh. and cool, you know, fix the voice out a little bit. But I had, I had bought the sweatsuits. I had the no. boots. And yes. I, I really, that was something that I thought I was going to do. No. I thought. But No. No. <laughs> Now, are, are you from Atlanta? No, Jacksonville, Florida, right down the street. Okay. You know, um, we just come back and forth, me and my cousins. We yeah. were called Grace Under Pressure, you know, and I was just, they wanted to rap, so we were rapping, but I like more of singing. Uh, I was like, you know, I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. I can, Atlanta is the place. Everybody's coming. So yeah. I have this super big, <laughs> remember the LL Cool J big radio yeah, boxes i had boy, one of those him. tell them yeah I know. and you had to be super strong to yeah. carry it i had one of those again and i was just singing and stuff all <laughs> around the city when underground used to be the place yeah. to, be to get discovered that's a long time ago that is a long time ago yeah though. but no one discovered me and i kept moving so so, <laughs> so was it from there you went into the army or i went back into the army okay um you know i i'd have a couple shifts in my life where and I first was in the Army, then I got out, I went to college, mm -hmm. went up to Howard for a minute. Mm. I felt like the city mouse, the country mouse in the city. Yeah. Because I wasn't used to all of the activities in D.C. Yeah. that were there. Yeah. But I was fortunate enough to get introduced to Marion Barry, which introduced me to politics, mm. which introduced me to how to do campaigns and stuff ah. like that. And I think that sparked Okay. Things for me. Okay. And so that he had, I don't know if you remember this thing called pride mm -hmm. and pride in yourself, pride in your community. And I was like, wow, we can, we can do something with okay. that. Okay. Okay. And then I think that brought back 
the memory when I got back out mm -hmm. in 2013. Mm -hmm. I was like, we can do something with okay. this. Just re, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, just start it again. I got you. And I feel, I felt that, you know, we can just help the homeless, but you don't have to coddle the homeless. Mm. Because once you coddle someone, mm. then they feel like they're entitled to it. Okay. But a lot of people just want a helping hand. Mm -hmm. And even with the services that we bring out with our partnerships from other people like um, Atlanta Technical College. Right. They have an amazing dentistry mm -hmm. in which they helped out yesterday. Uh, Miss Singleton, she's amazing. Yeah. Um, they help free with free services, scanning, sc screen, excuse me, screening. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> free screenings and then you also have um, Atlanta recovery Atlanta consultants they do all the health screenings and yeah, stuff for us right. which is amazing because yeah. the pay people don't have to pay or they have a reduced fee mm -hmm. and that's what helps out a lot yeah Atlanta Technical uh, College of, I've had the opportunity of speaking with some of the students there a couple mm -hmm. of times so yeah they are definitely trying to give those students the tools that they need so that yes. they can be successful yes. um, in different professions. So that's a good look and feel. I want to talk to you about when you first saw, when when it hit you. Mm -hmm. So when you, you were giving us an, an example that you, you know, if it's 30 people, you know, to get 60, right. you know, like, so each person can get like two outfits. Where did you see those 30 people? Where did you first encounter that, that 30? Peach tree and pine. Okay. Where they, uh, of course, you know, it's closed right, right now. Right, right. And then the day that they had the deadline, it the, it was disappeared. Everyone disappeared. Yes. So it's like, okay, where did the people go? Right, so right. So I found out. That was the first time that I saw the need. Okay. Um, then I started following where they were. Basically, Garnett Station, um, downtown mm. at the, they call it Tent City. Yeah. Um, also, you have a lot that's down by the jail mm -hmm. on the train tracks. Yes. And I didn't know all of that yeah. until I actually started going out there and walking, passing out stuff. Right. Passing out health care kits. Right. Passing out blankets, mm -hmm. water, food, and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. And that became, um, it became more intense because I was like, my God, it's just so many that need help. Yeah. And then I started to say, well, we got to get more people into this. Right. And so once I did that, I started reaching out to different organizations and they started to give help. Gotcha. Um, and that was one of the biggest things, partnership, mm -hmm. partnering with other mm -hmm. um, organizations. Mm -hmm. You have any idea what happened to the shelter on Peachtree and Pride? Why did they close? Any idea? Can you say, not say? I, let's say, I don't, I was not there. Right. Um, what's you know, the rumor? If you, Do we know what's the rumor? What's the speculation as to why that closed? Was it money? Was it just um, too much, too many people to be responsible for? Was it they busting out of the seams? Was it gentrification? Was it, no, he's my, I guess. Well, let's say I'm that according them. to the AJC, <laughs> okay. it was a water bill issue, tuberculosis, and crime. That's what the AJC said. I got you. Okay. And just like that, it was. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure there were some other things that, things that, that led you know, to it. But yeah, yeah. you know, because that's a, a prime piece of property. Yeah. So Keyword. we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Prime <laughs> piece of property. That's what it is, too. Yeah. And, you know, the the community, the homeless community spread yes. that from that area because mm -hmm. it was two blocks down. Yes. And two blocks over to the to the or block over to the left, if yes. you will. So it went on. What's that? Is that Peachtree West or uh, Piedmont or something? Piedmont, and you have um, is it is it Jupiter? Yeah, Jupiter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you have those streets, and of course, you know, you have Emory's right across right. the street. Right. Right. So I think that they were all gravitating there yeah. because if they do get hurt, they can just go to the hospital. hospital. But the, another thing that was happening also, you have an uh, an enormous super amount of um, trafficking yes. that goes on oh, there. And man. I ran into a lot of women. I ran into a lot of women who had their kids and they were using the kids as, um, I don't want to say, mm. but you know, they were using the kids in order to get by. Mm -hmm. And I had to inform the police a lot of times about that. Oh, and then, you know, because if that's, and they were really upset because they feel that, you know, it's their right to use 
their resources. Oh my God. I'm using I'm trying to be very, very I understand. I understand. You know, I understand. Their resources because it's their resources that they see it, oh. but they don't look at the child as a human being. Jeez. So that's one aspect. Then you had I met this one family who was eight of them living in a car and they couldn't get services because you know if you can get services if you are a single woman uh-huh. with kids, but okay. if you're married, it's more difficult. Okay. Not saying you can't get services, but it's tough. But it's really tough. So we did reach out, and Atlanta Housing helped them, mm-hmm. which I was so thankful for because mm-hmm. the guy had real medical issues too. Mm-hmm. So again, partnerships are very important. Yeah, yeah. So you you came, boots on the ground. I'm gonna say mm-hmm. that a lot, right? Mil- Ex military person, not really. Um, boots on the ground. Saw the 30 people there. Peace tree and pine, and you felt something, right? Yes. Because you gave what you had. Mm-hmm. The people needed it, but it was like, man, I barely scratched the surface. Because right. when you come with resources, it's almost like a sensory goes off, and yes. more people start to come, and you feel like overwhelmed in a sense because right. you don't have enough to take care of the masses, right? You're so right. Because that day, we went down with a. Um, Barbecue pit, yes, twenty foot barbecue pit, right. and I think we were talking earlier about it. And I had chicken, um, hamburgers, hot dogs, and we had food and everything else, um, kits, healthcare kits, and we gave all that out. Mm-hmm. But we saw a hundred, I think it was one hundred and sixty-seven people that day. Um, but it was so many more mm-hmm. that were still hungry. Yeah, and I was like. I don't know what to do. Yeah. I don't know what to do, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. it became almost overwhelming to me because I felt like I can't help enough people. Right. I don't have enough to help all of these right. folks. So right. It became almost a, um, it became a mission mm-hmm. because you have to, I felt I had to do this. Yeah. So. so is that where your charity was birthed or was already in flight at that time? When did it, when did the charity work start to really take off for you? Charity work. Well, I've been doing, let me say, my, I've been doing charity work for, like, my lifetime. My grandmother, mm-hmm. she used to, um, still does, um, she helps with the Cancer Society. Okay. And my uncle does this thing called Food Share mm-hmm. in South Carolina, um, and where you give food out for, like, you it's a box of food. I think we have a similar program right, here right. for, like, $10. Right. And it has a month worth of food. Yeah. And... I was like, well, how did we get that here? Mm-hmm. And then I learned about the food bank. Right. And the food bank, um, as you know, Southwest Food Bank, they give out tons of food all the mm-hmm. time. And Atlanta Food Bank also gives out tons of food also. So I started getting with those people. And even QT yeah. gives out food. And I was mm-hmm. like, hey, people love wraps. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken wraps, you know, turkey wraps. And that became really a, a yeah. popular item. So, yeah. Okay, so you're a generational helper, like charity work. It's just like in your bloodline to just continue this type of work and giving and supporting. I never looked at it, but I guess, like that, but yeah, I guess so. Yeah, Yeah. it's generational because you've been doing it for all your life and you've seen your elders do it. And so this is something that's been passed on you, but you just didn't realize it. That's why you're here today. That's why I'm here today. We talk about these things and kind of flush it all out. (laughs) Um, It is really... uh, it, it is. It, it's a lot because that, like we talked about, uh, Peace Tree and Pine, that shelter that was there. Yes, it's like gone. If you drive down that street now, it's like there's no indication that there was ever a homeless situation in that area. You're so right. You're it's so like right. gone. Like they, they, you don't even see a straggler. And how is it that they're able to just clear that area so well? Is it are we are they policing it or is it what what's going on in that space that it is no recollection of homeless people living there he's looking at me like i can't answer the question no, I i'm mean, asking think, the tough the tough question you, you have to think answer. about the dynamics of the city help me uh, help um, me um the city is growing yes it is um like you said early gentrifying yes and so when you have a growing city with a um, population that's there that needs to be, um, some may say is an eyesore. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Then you have to do something in order for the new money to come in. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm no, I don't want to say I'm an expert or anything, especially Atlanta politics, but right. I just see stuff and we all see stuff. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes we have to have a meaningful conversation about what's really actually going on. Yeah. You know, and not just say, oh, it's great, but it's not, it might look like it, yeah, but it's not. It's not. You know, yeah. so, I, and, and, and let me say this I think that um, Mayor Bottoms is doing a lot. Okay. As much as she can. Okay. You know, you, you, when you inherit a lot of stuff, yeah. you know, you have to deal with the overflow mm-hmm. of everything else that you have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Even you think about um, the airport takeover. Yeah. You know, she's dealing with a lot. And she did initiate, I think her name is Terry Lee, mm-hmm. who's now the chief housing person for the city, okay. who's actually trying to help with affordable housing. Mm-hmm for the um, homeless and transient, you know. Gotcha. Yeah. So. So, you know, that was one of my questions, too, because. Trying to be PC here. You are. And I, I don't know if I want that today. Because we got to get to. <laughs> well, you get to it. You know, it's gotta, like. Because it's, it's an it's, understanding. It's, like, we can't. I, I feel like. We are operating in blinders. Like, we, we, we go by every single day. And the population of homeless people, homelessness in Atlanta is growing. It is. I've seen it on 400 at Buckhead. Yes. Like going up 400, there's like the the sound wall. Yes. There's a sound wall that goes up there because I take the train into work. So I'm on the Mart and I actually looked one day and I saw people, their personal belongings, like stuck up Mm -hmm. in the sound wall going up to Buck, like past Lindbergh. Go in the bucket. Like, it's everywhere. Well, you have to understand also there's different types of homelessness Come where there now. are different types of um, epidemic okay. or drug epidemic gotcha. issues. So in the city, you know, we have a big, um, we'll say crack. Yes. Stuff like that. Yeah. I think certain minorities or certain races deal with certain type, only deal with, I don't want to say only. Okay. Um, black people are normally with crack mm. or with. Um, weed. Right. Then you go up to a little further up and you have the meth and meth. the ice issue. Yes, yes. So when you have that, there may be a more um, lenient way to deal with things mm. where it's seen more as a rehabilitation than a justification. Okay. So if, but, 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 I will say now we have started what they have a, um, a where they're trying to help you, where if you do have an issue, they'll try to send you to um, rehab. Okay. So, and that's one good thing that's happening right now okay. with the courts. Okay. And I'm happy for that. Okay. But there is a big disparity when you talk about services on both ends, you know. And like you said earlier, where did all those people go? Yeah. Think about even in January and when the Super Bowl came. Right, you had an enormous amount of people downtown. Yeah. But where did they go? I have no idea. I have no idea. So, you know. Would they bust out and then, or put somewhere temporarily and then, I, you know what? You, you know, the, let's <laughs> say the rumor Come on. is that they were bust out. Okay. And they were sent to different counties. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, but you send them back to where they're supposed to come from, but then the people already have an issue there. So yeah. what do you do? You send them back. Yeah. So now they, the people who you're sending back, the homeless folks, they're in a catch-22. Yeah, they are. They're already homeless, mm-hmm. but now you got somebody who's angry with you for coming back to where you actually originally from, mm-hmm. and now you're back here in the city, so what do you do? Yeah. So you have to find a place until this big event is over to stay. Like I said, when I went down to, as we call it, Tent City, it was an amazing amount of people down right. there. And right. then that was right before the January term, and then when I went back down there, it was like Ghost City, just mm-hmm. like Peach, Bean, mm-hmm. Peach Tree and Pine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now, where exactly is Tent City for those that are listening? Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, Tent City is if you know where the intersection is between 20, uh, 75, 85. Mm-hmm. If you anywhere downtown the city junction, when it slows down, you'll see the Capitol sitting over there. You will see mm-hmm. the big Delta sign mm-hmm. and the IBEW. Yeah, right under there is where Tent City yes, is. Yes, it is. So yeah. walking under there. You'll, you will find, even I just passed now, I saw at least 50 tents out there. Not only under there, but down by the railroad on that side. And um, to walk under there, you have 
everything that you have to remember they have no bathrooms right right they have no type of nothing. shower or anything yeah, like nothing. that now one good thing about that is that gateway is right over there gateway houses about 300 beds that's okay. a shelter yeah and they do but do what they can do mm-hmm. but you know, again it's an overflow we have yeah. a mass amount of people they can only do what they can do mm-hmm. so there can we can we have another shelter open or that's not a good look for the city i think it w- we can have another shelter open in my opinion but i think that it would be better slated a little further out mm-hmm. on the outskirts of the city okay. because one if you think about this if you put the people out let's say out of their normal area mm-hmm. if i bring you into the country mm-hmm. like when they used to send me to the country when I in the summertime. Mm-hmm. You have a pers- different perspective on life. Yeah. So now you can breathe the air. You can relax. There's no hustle and bustle, no cars running by. Mm-hmm. You can bring your guard down, mm-hmm. and then I can also teach you a skill. Okay. So, you know, okay. if I can teach you how to do aquaponics, or I can teach you how to um, learn how to be a plumber, Mm. apprentice Mm. or you know because we have tons of people who are retired who are willing to come out and teach Mm. so I can't teach you to test but we can teach you how to be an apprentice or we can teach you basic basic skills in order to get you to where you need to be to get into where you might want to be right 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 when you say um you know possibly outside of the city, then that's a whole nother conversation. It is. Because now it's like, are you going to send them to Southwest Atlanta? Are you going to send, (laughs) are you going to send them South? Are you going to send them North? Like, like Alpharetta? Are you going to send them to Swanee? Are you going to send them East or West? Like, so now it's a whole, it is because then I think it's a certain amount of miles away from the nucleus of Atlanta. Right. 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 To, to make those accommodations, just to make sure that people feel like, Ooh, I, why are you bringing them to my neighborhood now? But you think about it, anywhere you put somebody, yeah. anywhere you put one of these sites, it's going to be an issue. It's going to be. Somebody, even if you're yeah. out in rural Georgia, right. you got a guy maybe 30 miles down, hey, why are you putting those no good people here? And that's what they, that's what's, yeah. you know. So it's like everyone has to give up a little bit of comfort in order to help as much as possible. Wow, that's good. You know, you think about it, it's like, okay, I'll see my brother on the side of the street. Mm-hmm. Do I stop because, you know, and give him something, even though it's convenient for me, mm-hmm. inconvenient for me? Mm-hmm. It, so, yeah, it may take out two minutes of my time. Mm-hmm. That's two minutes. Yeah. So it inconveniences me two minutes in order to give this guy some food or something like that or give him a dollar or give him some water. Right. But if we all took two minutes out of our and inconvenienced ourselves, mm-hmm. we can do a lot. Yeah, we could. Our community together, and that's why I always say, the community is what can stop this thing. Mm. I do believe that. I think mm. that, you know, we have so much money in mm. our community. Mm. I mean, literally, think about it. Atlanta has a lot of millionaires. Yeah. And even people who aren't millionaires, if you gave $5, okay, mm. if we one community gave $5, we can even open up a shelter or feed people without going to other people mm. looking for them to feed you. Right, right. I just think it's time we stop looking for other people to start solving and, our and, problems. And that's true. And I think for the most part, people want to help. Right? They do. People want to help. People want to give. But people will not be offended and they're not going to be insulted. So what's happening is there's a different, there's a sl- slow emergence of a different mindset right. for some mm-hmm. within the homeless community that when you give a dollar, they got, they'll tell you, I'm going to need five. I'm going to need five. Because I can't do nothing with that dollar. Right. And tell you to keep that dollar. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. There was a time that as a female, you drive and you could roll your window down and you could extend maybe some food, mm-hmm. some money. Now, we're not really sure right. the vibe or the energy that person is on. It could be violent now. Exactly. You, so now now we are sitting like, some of us are like, man, I'm not giving you anything because, right. first of all, I worked to get this. Real talk. I worked to get this, and I'm sharing this with you mm-hmm. because you're my brother, you're my sister, mm-hmm. we look alike. It's unfortunate. I don't know what your situation is. Right. It's not a judgment thing. I just want to extend a hand. And you slapping my hand? Man, listen, we, we, we rolling. We're not, we're not going to do it. So I feel like... 
I don't I don't know at what part or how can we help continue to help those that want the help versus those that are like I'm starting to understand that this is a racket. It is. This is a business. A lot of people have realized that a lot of homeless people are up on it. Yeah. You know, and a lot of them use your, they use sympathy in order to gain the system that, Mm. you know, but you have to think about it. They're in survival mode. Okay. So survival mode means whatever I have to do to survive for the day or tomorrow, because most people only look at right now Mm -hmm. when you're home well most of the homeless only look at right now because you think about it they're living for the now Mm -hmm. and i do think when you talk about us giving you have to be careful because Mm -hmm. you don't know what people are on Mm -hmm. a lot of them i met this guy yesterday i was like hey i have some free services over here for Mm -hmm. you even Mm -hmm. behavior services that are there and we can help you right he's like well i'm schizophrenic and i have i'm on medication and i don't think you will want to talk to me right now i was like i can help you if you want to be helped and he's like well i'll come back and i understand that Mm -hmm. he wasn't ready and i think people come when they are ready okay okay so yeah are you osborne have you noticed a difference in the in the types of homeless people that you've encountered in the past six six or seven years and i say that to say maybe and i could be ignorance i don't know when we think when we think homelessness (laughs) we think they were displaced, could mm-hmm. have been a fire, like no right. insurance, no means to get back where they were, loss of job, something, right. change in life, right? Divorce this, domestic situation, like I had to leave, I didn't have anything. Some instances run away, right. like, you know, listen, you know, people coming out with their sexuality, I can't stay there, I run away. So there were different cadences yes. or attributes that led into why people were homeless. So I felt that was a time then. Now it sounds like we have we still have those variables mm-hmm. in conjunction with mental illness now, right? right? right. Severe use of drugs, like mm-hmm. different types of drugs. Yeah, it used to be crack, now it's meth and all this yes. other stuff. Different things in this, trafficking, there's so many other different things now that are part of the homeless community. That it's 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 it is an overwhelming experience. It can be. It right? can be. It can be. And you're right. There are different levels, different types of homelessness. Right. You have the people who are couch jumpers. Mm. You know, um, let me sleep on your couch. You know, my girlfriend kicked me out. Okay. But it's not really. I've just been. I don't have a place to stay. Okay. You have the student who is homeless, mm. who stays in the dorms, or they sleep behind the dorms, wow. or they go. Um, it's one case where the kids were actually downtown behind the, it was over by the rail, they had a tent, mm. but they were still going to school every day. Wow, yeah, So yeah. I was trying to get with Marta and see if I can get them bus passes, but I just ended up giving them bus passes myself. Wow. Then you have, you know, other people where the wife has been abused. Yes. And her and the kids are kicked out mm-hmm. but she's still taking the kids to school every day every day Man, and yes. they're sleeping out of the car yeah and that's another that's what you know you have this i guess you call it the hidden homeless right right so those folks aren't counted when you talk about the actual count i got you okay yes. okay so and you, that's unique it is it is because they're functioning right they're functioning within their homelessness exact situation exactly. they're functioning and it's just like a, just a matter of like it's almost like they're just one step away from getting fully back on their feet. Like exactly. if they could just get that one break mm-hmm. where maybe it's a consistent paycheck or because one can't happen without, without the, other the other sometimes. Right. right? I want to give you a job. But what's your address? Right. And you, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, how do I how do I do that? And then for and, and in those examples that you shared, a lot of people continue to live life for normalcy, Mm -hmm. right? Just to know that I'm not out of the game. Right. Right, because I still got it, my kids still need an education. Right. They'll get meals there. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll deal with the night when I pick them up, but at least they can still have some sense of a normal, yeah, a Mm -hmm. normal pattern. Me going to work, even though we live in the car, still I feel like I'm providing, I'm doing something, I'm using my skill. Exactly. And and the kid, the, the college kid that's going to school. So those are, like it's I don't want to say functioning addicts, but they're functioning but they're people. They're functioning people. They're right. functioning in the in the midst of all of that. And you have to think it's almost like therapy. Yeah, it is. You know, so I have to keep doing this in order to keep myself normal. Yeah. What is called normal. Right. So for the kids, 
they think we're camping out in the car mm. or the van. Yeah. So, but we're still going to school. We're keeping everything yeah. else normal as mm. for the kid that's going to college. You don't know where I'm sleeping at, mm. but I'm still keeping a normal life. That's all you see on the outside. Right. You know, the wife that may have gotten abused or the husband that, you know, may have gotten abused yeah, also. Yeah, yeah, men are you know, getting abused, unfortunately, know, right? too. You know, yeah, it's happening. You got, you got them big mamas out there to be beating men down, too, so... <laughs> <laughs> you know big moms. I don't wish to say big head. mama. He's I was got just like, in the head you know, just being got, abusive. It, hitting the brother in the head or something. You, you know, know? But men, you know, it is. But you have, again, you have those people who have to keep up the normal side mm -hmm. in order to keep them together. Yeah. So I'll be in my car, but everything else is, you know, the same way. Mm -hmm. I might have got kicked out of the house, but everything else is still mm -hmm. normal. So mm -hmm. if I can just keep that paycheck, like you said, yeah. I can finally go get me a place to stay. Yeah. So it all works out. It all works it, out. It, it, one hand washes the other in some mm -hmm. kind of regard. Um, is it from what you've experienced, uh, is it more men that are homeless versus women or the percentages are about the same roughly in, in your experience and what you've seen? Honestly, I'm going to have to say in my when you look at the numbers, mm -hmm. I always think about, well, who's taking the numbers? OK, so. <laughs> Who's, okay. you know, so Who, where's the data, where the data is actually from? coming from? Yeah. So, cause I remember I had this conversation and I was like, well, you know, I've just ran across 300 people who were homeless downtown. And they were like, well, you've got to be joking. I was like, well, am I joking or you haven't been down there? Okay now. So, but in my experiences, as I pass out my supplies, we have them separated as a men, women and family packs. Okay. I give out more women hygiene packs than I do anything. Really? Yes. We gave out under Tent City um, 600 hygiene kits. Are you serious? Yes. Over, uh, over a year or during, how, what was that At period? that time, that was one, that, that was at one time at that one point. So Are you serious? Now, I'm going to say that we, now there may have been, we some, at some points we give two. Ooh. We'll give two because it's a week's worth. Yes. So we may give two. So I would say at least you know, if I'm giving two, I didn't give two to everybody, mm -hmm. but it was a lot. So I would say it's more women. It has really? to be more women because you got not only the women, but you have the girls that are out Young there too. Young ladies too. Yes. Young women. Yes. Oh man. And so they have to be. You know, we're trying to make things as normal. Give them as much as possible. Right. Because it's really important. Because even you think about this lady I have on my um, Instagram. She was saying that being homeless and not able to bathe and not able to have. Um, sanitary kits it's ugly you know and that touched me it hurt me mm. because I'm like I gotta find something yeah we've got to get a shower system for these folks so that they can actually start taking wow. showers you know so but one place I'm gonna have to say hope for soap they do a lot okay they do a lot and that's one thing that we're working on a mobile shower so if we can get a mobile shower, I can take it down yeah. there and just, you know, warm water. Yeah, yeah. It's important, you know. Yes, it is. So, yeah, we can get that, and I think that would help out a lot, as much as possible. Yeah. I know I can't, you know, we can't eradicate homelessness in Atlanta by myself, but I know, I mean, and when I say myself, I'm talking about my team, yeah. you know. Um, but I'm just trying to make a big enough dent that we can help out. Mm. And you're a nonprofit? Yes, yes. Thank mm, God, you know. Thank <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people say they aren't, but you know, yeah. but yeah, we actually are. Yes, Man. which is which, which was important because a lot of folks say that they are, and then they look you up and they're like, "Well, you aren't," and then they'll say, "Well, um, I'm working on it." Yeah, but I don't like to come to anybody with half nope, nope, half baked. Nope. nope. So if you nope. ever do give or donate, know that everything is. Under the 501c3. Tell them the name of your company. My your, name, your nonprofit. Uh, the name of the nonprofit is Kalelu's Community Charities. Okay. And again, we are a 501c, mm -hmm. and um, we basically serve the Metro Atlanta area. Okay. Um, if there, and we don't turn anyone down. Mm. Never have I turned anyone down. Really? Yes, I can't do that. It would just, I, I couldn't go to bed at night if I turned anyone down wow. who needed help. So, it has become a mission it is yeah. a mission yes you're doing generational work legacy work here. legacy work this thank you legacy. i'm gonna use that now i want you to know absolutely <laughs> feel free to buy or borrow that anytime that's legacy work legacy work yes you because if you are so compassionate about it yeah you, this is really big and I, I had no idea i just thought 
oh, he's a nice guy. He's probably out. He goes out. He does what he can in the little community areas. Man, you're touching a lot of people. I have to say that I'm thankful for the partnerships that I've gotten mm-hmm. to know. Mm-hmm. Um, even the political partnerships that I've right, had, you right. know, they've helped out a lot. When you, you, in order to, this thing is so big, you have, you can't do it by yourself. You, by yourself. you know, uh, it, you, you just cannot do it by yourself. And you have to have people like yourself who are helping me put the word out. Yes. You have to have government officials who are helping writing the legislation that will help you mm. to help them. Yes. You know, and, you know, especially when it comes to mental health, you don't want to put somebody in jail who has a mental issue, yeah. on drugs or something like yeah. that because of the drugs that you've given him. Mm-hmm. Now he's schizophrenic. So you can't put him in gen pop. You have to put him into a certain, a special area. So it's like all of that works hand in hand together. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm super thankful for those partnerships. Yeah, they've been incredible. They have been. And you've done the work as it relates to Osborne reaching out to people or have people been finding you and saying, I see you're doing some great work. I want a partner. I want a line. How's that been working for you? You know, I- I'm going to say He's that. He's smiling like <laughs> really big. Like, I I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, I- I'm going to say that I have people reaching out now. Okay, now. At, at first, at first, it was difficult because again, no one knows Nobody who you are. Knows who you are. And then it's a question of why are you doing this? Are you mm-hmm. trying to do gain for yourself, yes. or you must be running for some office or something right, like that? Right. And it's like all I'm trying to do is help. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, yeah. that's all I'm trying to do. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, if someone needs food, that's what I'm trying to do. Right. You know, and um, but the partnerships um, in DeKalb County has really picked up a lot. Um, this one DICF is DeKalb Initiative for Children and Families. Okay. They are a part of um, human trafficking also. Mm. They fight that, So, which is a part of people who are um, at-risk individuals yes. that we help. Mm-hmm. So the partnership there has worked out well. Um, you also have um, Atlanta Recovery, which I said earlier. It's just a lot of people who are helping. Mm-hmm. which, again, I'm thankful for because mm-hmm. I can't do dental kits, you yeah. know, or I can't do help you with your mental issues or behavioral right. services right. Right. that are needed. So I reach out to folks, and they're more than happy to help. Now, today is, like I said at the beginning of the conversation, it is Easter Sunday, and typically when holidays come around, that's when people want to give back the yes. most, right? Mm-hmm. So you got the Thanksgiving buzz, and there's Christmas, and then there's Mother's Day, and there's, you know, and there's Easter, and typically Easter is we tend to reach out to the homeless community. Yes. We give them haircuts. We d- do the ladies' hair. We give them kits. We give them food. And then as th- the sun sets, right, those resources are gone and you don't see them right, for right. another year, right? Go back into normalcy, right? Go back to normalcy. So yes. you are here today, which I appreciate that because today could have been one of your busiest days, but yesterday was yesterday. a busy day for you. Yes. So tell us a little bit about yesterday. Yesterday was insane. Um, <laughs> if anybody knows about Atlanta weather, you know it changes it on a dime. It was nuts. Um, we had, um, first, I have to say I'm very thankful for all the work that we did and the people that came out. Okay. Um, when you talk about setup and you talk about giving folks food and you talk about the homeless, you have mm-hmm. to think about a lot of people are weary. They're like, well, what are you doing over there? Mm-hmm. The homeless folks. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you doing? Are you going to try to get something off me? or Because mm-hmm. they don't want to give their information. Right. But we were able to hold what was called Healthcare for the Homeless Initiative. Um, this was our third one this year. And um, again, we were able to do dental screening and health screening, mm-hmm. HIV and AIDS. Mm-hmm. And also, if they needed it, um, we were able to um, refer them out for behavioral services. Nice. Wow. Which was very, very good. Wow. You know, I have to say, you know, from that we got another um, company that asked us to come to their hotel mm-hmm. because they're more like a um, mainstay with a, you know, temporary housing. Yeah. So they asked us to come there, and they have like 70 families there that they want us to come mm. and help out and do a health services thing oh. there too. So from there, we, our next one hopefully will be up in Gwinnett. But mm. this one was really, really special because when people came out, it was bad weather. Yeah. You know, folks don't like to come out doing bad weather. No. Nope. No one likes to come out doing bad weather. So you nope. think about it, it's like it was cold, it was raining, mm. our tents were blowing away, mm. and um, but we had good food, <laughs> hot coffee, <laughs> and amazing people who were serving. So, yeah. yes, yes. And where was it at? Where was it located? Wesley Chapel mm-hmm. in the Decatur area. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm um, across the street from the um, Home Depot. Okay. And um, we had a, a really good, really good show. How so, do yeah. you determine the locations? By the need. We okay. look at how many people are over there. Um, normally, like when we did the one right before this in um, at Gannett Station, mm -hmm. the Marta Station, uh, across from the um, Greyhound Station, mm -hmm. we'll say that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'll say it, keep on saying it's where Magic City is. I, I, not, I wasn't going to say he that. He wasn't going to say it. I'm going to say I'm going to look in the camera and say it's near where Magic City is. The infamous, right across popular. The Yes. Uh, Magic. Yeah, my producer standing up. She's like smiling at me. Yeah. So Garnett train, Marta train station. Yes. The, yes, the Greyhound is there. Yes. Magic City is there. There is a lot of um, homeless people. Because there's a ju there's a there's a um, um, not a juvenile center, isn't there? There's like a um, the jail is right. There. A jail is right there. That's what I'm saying. Jail. The jail is, is right, right there. there. Gateway is right yeah. there. Yeah. And that's where a lot of homeless people hang out. Mm -hmm. So there we saw like 300 people. Yeah, I believe you. And um, I have to say between, I am so thankful that the Wounded Warriors came out. Um, that's the group I'm affiliated with also. Okay. The Wounded Warriors, Mission Continues. They were there to help because I only thought I needed eight volunteers. Mm -mm. <laughs> In my mind, I'm thinking, mm -mm. I just need eight people. And the, they're, they're called the Keys. They're a military sorority. They came out. And they were so efficient. Mm. They kept the order. They kept, um, you know, directing everyone. They helped with pass the food out. Right. Everything. Because it was a couple of issues. You know, people are people. and But they nipped that in the bud and call it a day. And everybody yeah. was like, oh, okay. Could you move over here? Yo, oh, that's what you wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? And that's what happened. Yeah. So to keep it lighthearted. Yeah, yeah. You need more volunteers, don't you? Yes. Yes, we need volunteers. I think you're just being real humble, but you need a lot. You need a lot of help. Wow. We need a lot of help you because do. it's the community that you know we're helping, and I think that if the community comes out, then we can just help each other. Mm -hmm. We can help our own selves. Because right. Once you think about it, if you help the homeless in your community, you're actually helping your community because when you're taking folks off the street, you're actually getting them employed, which is bringing more revenue back into the community. Come on now. And now you're able to have these folks help other people mm -hmm. now they're got they have housing they can buy food and you don't have to worry about them breaking in your house right. taking your food or right. trying to steal your car right, right. you know because they're so making their own they're making their own making people want own. to do for themselves for the most part for yeah. the most for the most part for the right, most part right. they do i'll give you that yes for the most part so that ha that has to be screened you have to vet those individuals yes, out yes you do and yes, that type do. of thing i see you doing more than just I, there's there is um there are several components of <laughs> he's, he's laughing and smiling. There's several components of work that you're doing because it's not just feeding right. the homeless and it's not just giving them hygiene packets. There's this underlying underlying um, vibe that you have that you want to empower them. Yes. Those yes. that want to be. Those that want to be. In the sense of you know providing housing or leading them where they can get that housing. Right. And then you don't have a skill? Oh, maybe you need to be in a workshop or we have people to teach you a skill right. Right. and help you get, you know, the jobs. And it's a, like there's a whole program there, thing you got going on over there in your is. head. It's, it, we, we actually have a, a what I call an SOP, okay. uh, Standards Operation Procedure, of course. that um, we are trying to um, – put into fruition or mm. bring it out because you think about it if it's steps if i find someone on the street i can bring them in yes even if they're not there full time you can come in during the daytime mm -hmm. i can help you learn how to be an apprentice somewhere okay. or okay. you know electrician plumber even um you know someone who does carpentry work mm -hmm. we have people who have who are hiring and we'll teach folks how to do these things. Nice. Now, that is important because one, a lot of folks just have no hope. Right. So if you have no hope, you feel helpless, you feel overwhelmed, mm -hmm. then it's like, okay, I'm just gonna be what I'm being and leave it at that. I'm not gonna worry about this. Hey, I can make enough money um, doing day labor and then just live for the day and call mm -hmm. it a day. But I think that one, like you stated, if we can, um, the community itself start helping out with the teaching yeah. training we can retrain you think about our seniors are the biggest vast 
is the biggest amount of knowledge that we have. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, a lot of people like to discard them, but yeah. these guys have so much knowledge that it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's true. They And they're willing to teach. That's true, because they have the time. They have the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, you don't know what you're doing with that car. Let me help you, let me help yeah. you fix it. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. the muffler, that's the radiator. They know these things they right do. off the top. Mm -hmm. Or even, you know, with the kids right now, um, there's a program that the NSA has um, that will allow them to they're looking for internships during the summer. Okay. So even if you are into cybersecurity mm -hmm. or you're into computers or stuff like that, we try to gravitate you towards, towards this. So, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they pay you. They give you a place to stay and pay you mm -hmm. for that. So, you know, you can either go to D.C. or you can be in Augusta. Wow. So that's one of the things that I'm working on to help prevent that. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a, um, one of the teachers to, um, the other day and Gwinnett, and it was like, it's this percentage of kids that just drop out of the system because we know they're not gonna graduate. And I was like, well, where do these kids go? Right. They say they become homeless. Yeah. Like, well, we gotta reach these kids, kids here yeah. before they fall out. I say, if you are identifying them in junior high school, maybe we should catch them. Right, You know, Perhaps. before they fall out. Yeah. And try to work with them. Mm. It, it's got to be something else going on other than them not wanting to be at school. Yeah. That's all. Is it just lack of interest for them? Or? I think it's a lack of leadership. Okay. Let me back up. Let me say this. I think it's a lack of, um, a lot of the boys that I see don't have fathers. Okay. So then if you don't have mentorship there, mm -hmm then of course all you're gonna do is just do what your friends are doing yeah. who are not doing anything. Right, right. They had this experiment in Africa where these young elephants were running wild, mm -hmm. just tearing up stuff which they shouldn't have been. And then mm -hmm. they brought some older elephants in and then the elephants, the young elephants calmed down mm -hmm. because the older elephants were there to guide them and tell them what, and show them yeah. what they needed to do. And I think it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of men out there that are trying to mentor but they don't know, you know where to go how to reach the kids, and I think that's a problem because I'm trying to figure out how to reach them. Yeah. You know, Okay. how to find them, so. Do you think if you had younger people in your team, that might help? Of course. Um, just kind of bridge again? to each other, you know, mm -hmm. millennials are millennials, mm -hmm. and even, even, you know, little younger than millennials and stuff like that, you know, but I, I don't like putting labels on right. people because that's what everyone does. Right. But of course, um, generations can speak to the same generation easier than I can go and say, hey, you know, you're doing this wrong or maybe you want to try this. And, you know, it sounds better coming from, like, me telling you something mm -hmm. would sound better than a kid telling you, saying, what does kid know? Right, you know? right, right. But, yeah, I do believe that young people, um, if I had more young kids, younger people, mm -hmm. that they can help with the issue. Yeah, facilitate mm -hmm. that. Yes. Hmm. Do we <laughs> – he's laughing. Do we – I, you know, I don't know, because I know you're going you're gonna to smile at me when I ask the question, but i got to oh, ask Lord. the question. <laughs> it's not, it's not Let's that do it. Bad. Let's just do it. Shoot Let's just get on Straight out Straight no chaser, does, right? the, does the city have um, some projects in place to help homeless people, as far as you know? As far as I know, the biggest thing that I've seen is that Mayor Bottoms has the um, projected, from what I understand, um, one billion dollars for um, housing and low income. Okay. I've seen that, read that rather. Okay. Um, that's what I've seen. Okay. Atlanta Mission is one of the biggest um, supporters of the homeless. Yes. Um, but when you go a little further out, you don't have that type of support. No. And that's why I think that's why I'm out. I do Metro Atlanta a lot. Okay. Because you have to think about it. I think we have maybe one homeless shelter, if any, in DeKalb County. Mm. It's no fault on DeKalb County. Right. It's just a point where, you know, this wave of homelessness has just come really. It's come out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. It's come so, out of nowhere. So, again, that's why I think that if we all just look at it, you know, and just try to help out mm -hmm. where we can. Not mm -hmm. saying, and I don't, I don't want anybody going out and, like you said, a, especially a, a female to approach someone if they don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. about it because you don't know what's happening know. with that person. Yeah. You have to be super careful also. Yeah, I'm not saying think. that they're – but, you know, you still have to be careful. Yeah. And you, you should link up with an organization. Yes. Because you have a lot of people doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. But a lot of people aren't doing the same thing, you know. And, and we'll leave it at that. Okay. You know, so. Yeah, because we talked about it during the Green Room um, <laughs> opportunity or room before we started. But – because there was a time, like, people could just load up their cars. Right. 
right? At Thanksgiving, you get the call. Mm -hmm. Show, we're going to load up. We're going to serve the homeless. Yes. Okay, I'm down. I'm in. Somebody's cooking the food. We're cooking. They got the size, the styrofoam boxes. We go to a space not far from Pine or Peachtree right. or under a, the, the uh, interstate, yes. right? There's always people kind of just kind of give some out. They say, thank you. You go on your way. Well, that's what we're doing. Um, people wanted to set stuff up in the parks, right? right? The whole man, Easter, we're going to help. Mother's Day especially, mm -hmm. go do different kinds of things. Now we can't do that, right? We need permits to be in the park to you feed people. You Is that permits. what's What's going on with that? Why? Is it that... Is it that um, by us coming to help, we're not really helping because we're causing more of a flex? I, he's, he's well, right. you know, uh, let me say this. You know, <laughs> what's, it, it, what's going on? I think that when you talk about when you talk about feeding the homeless, okay, and you talk about things that other people may not be doing, okay. it may be sore a sore spot. All right. So when I put in a um, a situation where it might make it a little difficult for you to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that people aren't the gov let me say I'm not saying the city isn't doing anything mm -hmm. because again, I do believe they're doing a lot. Okay. But when you have to um you have to look at different parameters. Um because one, think about this. If you feed somebody, answer. then you're responsible for if they get sick. True. And okay. And then if they get sick, then Who's responsible? Who's responsible for? Got gotcha. you. So I can understand limiting that. Okay. You know. Um, that makes sense. The uh, the permit, I don't know. You okay. Know, I, okay. I'm, I don't know what the real reasoning was behind that. I just know that it's become a thing around the country. And at one mm. point I thought it was a um, war on the homeless. But I just do whatever, whatever I can do. Okay. You know, so I, whatever, I try to make sure I stay within okay. the guidelines right. so that it won't be an issue. Right. So it's like. You think about if you tell me I have to come on your show with a coat or, you know, with hard shoes on and mm. I come in with flip flops on and a beach shirt, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I can still can I still come on the show? Mm. No. I mean, you mm. come on, but I'm gonna give you a hard time about it. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> But she didn't tell me to come on with a coat. Yeah. yeah it's just what just, I just no, what I do. No dress, so dress but cool, yeah. um I think that if if the City says you have to do something. Let's try to work with what they say. Okay. Stay within the guidelines because you don't want any problems. Right. In the future. So I stay within the guidelines, and I do a lot within the guidelines. Mm. So it's easy. You go get – but even with a business permit, what I just found out is if you are a um, – I think it's – the guy told me if you are a homeless vet – not a homeless vet. If you are a uh, veteran, disabled vet, you can get your license for free. I haven't verified that yet. So if you're doing um, your business license, which I already have a business license right, anyway. Right, right. So, you know, just get the license, $75, mm -hmm. feed the people. If you have to take up a community um, donation for yeah, $75. Yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah, if your organization, you have an organization, you can get $75 mm -hmm. selling um, bottles. That's what I used to do when I was small, selling bottles. So Bottles of water? Bottles of, you know, it used to be five cents on the bottle. Oh. You take it back to the grocery store. Oh. It, it's, I don't even think they can do that anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. I am no, showing my no, age, yeah. but it is what it is. Just you know? a teens. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I used to sell bottles you know, and, and get the food and stuff and buy stuff for folks and then, you know. When you were a kid. Yes. yes. So you've been, like I said, legacy. You've been doing yeah. this all your life. But then, you know, I buy me some Boston baked beans. Folks don't know what that is. Yeah, know, I do. Okay. Boston. That and Lemonheads. <laughs> Lemonheads, yeah. You know, so that was my treat. So if I get $5 from the bottles, then I buy me some Boston baked beans. For, for 10 nickel. cents. Nickel or 10 cents, mm -hmm. right? And so, and a pop. And then the rest of the money, I go buy some food and stuff for the homeless. So it's always something that can be done, yeah. even in the smallest amount. And, you know, we just have to keep doing that. Yeah. Have you ever been discouraged in, in doing what you do? Have you ever said, you know what, I'm not doing this anymore? Every day. <laughs> I, but, you know, I you have good people. Me. No, oh, my God, overwhelming because we have a community closet. And I'm very thankful that folks have started reaching out mm -hmm. and giving. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, I've got way too many clothes. <laughs> mm. So then not only because before um, – 
I think because I was on IG and I put down I was washing clothes right. for the homeless, wow. and I didn't know it was eight dollars and seventy nine cents a load, wow. and I had like ten loads, right? Yeah. So plus that was just to wash. Yeah. And we're not talking about dry. dry. So. <laughs> mm. Like okay, this is a little more than I thought. Yeah. But at the end, you have to know within yourself that this is what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And if I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing, you take solace in that. Okay. And I'm calm and wow. relaxed. And then you have good people who are mm -hmm. helping you to bring yourself back down. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm not going to lie. Yesterday seemed like, I was like, where's everybody? Oh, my God. The, and it's raining. And the folks are going to be, you know. Yeah. But I had heaters in there. Everyone was comfortable. And that was the biggest thing because I don't want anybody cold, especially the people who are helping me. Yeah. Because and and I think even when doing production, you know, you're always going to feel overwhelmed. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You you have to be because if you're not, you're the person that's got to make that everyone's looking at if something goes yeah. wrong. Yeah. It's your baby. Even when you're giving like um, a dinner. Yeah. Like when I never eat when I give a dinner no. because I'm running around trying to yeah. make sure everyone's yeah. eating, everyone's no. entertained, yeah. everyone's taken care of. Yeah. It's always you may eat hours later. Yes, maybe because then you have to come down off that high. You do because then yeah. you're always debriefing and figuring out what went right, what went wrong, how to change. Just you kind of, and then it's just the congratulations or the comments, and it's it's you don't kind of wind down until like hours later. You don't, and you, you don't. don't have time to coddle or babysit people in that moment. Yeah, you have to have you know efficient people mm -hmm. with you in order to know that hey, they're confident enough in their job, mm -hmm. and they have to know that what you're doing is the overscope of everything. Mm -hmm. So if I need you to run the camera, I just need you to run the camera. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't need you to bring your friend, and they're like, oh, what are we doing? I understand. Hey, I'll accommodate you, but, you know, yeah. let me do this. I'll talk to you. Mm -hmm. Just give me a second. Yeah, I know yeah. you want to do this interview. Just Give me a second. Yeah. I promise. Mm -hmm. Where does your team consist of? How many people well, help you to do what you do? Let's say this. I have a team of consistent people, three. Okay. Now, when we talk about volunteering, that's when everyone else comes out. Mm -hmm. Like um, my one person that's always there is, um, his name is, um, <laughs> he's going to kill me, Kareem. Okay. He's with Mission Continues also. Okay. Him and his wife. Um, also, you have Karen, um, Karen Jordan. She's always there writing up stuff for me mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And currently, Julia, who is my wife, she does stuff for me also. She tries to keep things going. Nice. So we have those. Oh, and, 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 and um, a DeKalb Initiative for Children and Families, Miss mm -hmm. uh, Sanders, she okay. writes up a lot of stuff for me also. Okay. Um, her and Johnny, they're really good, mm -hmm. really good. So you have a small core which brings out two Which is more. strong. That's yes. a strong group. And because when you do that, then the Wounded Warriors come out, which is with Patrick, and then you have the Mission Continues, which is with, um, which is with Kim Mia, and then you have the Keys, who is with Kim Mia also, and then it just branches so out. So you have layers there. of different... Yes people yes. helping mm -hmm. when you guys do things so yes. you, it's never really just the three or four of you guys no, no, it's no. more than that mm -hmm. so you're not in this by yourself no no partnership again is very important which mm -hmm. I'm very again thankful for because again I can't do this by myself no, I might I thought I could at mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. but then after feeling like you know I'm just you, because at one point I felt like it was just way too much. Yeah. And I wanted to just walk away from Just everything. feeding people. Yes. Is a lot. It's a lot. It's just to be able to put food together to feed X amount of people is a lot. Yes. Because it's the right food. Yes. The, to put in there, to package it, to bring enough, to have the transportation and the mechanism to get it there. Yes. Then the people you need with you to serve the people. And then just to deal with the interaction, because mm -hmm. some are going to be very emotionally thankful, yeah. and then some are going to be angry, or some are going to want more, and you don't have it. So it's all these different things that go into it. You're absolutely right. Yeah. The guy was like, I stood in line for this. I said, yeah, barbecue <laughs> chicken. He's like, man, you ain't got no ribs? I was like, I'm sorry, bro. I didn't have ribs. Ah, oh. and the other guy said, I'll take it. And left with it, and I was like, yeah. but you know, you're right. Even yeah. with the guy with the blue shoes, we were giving out, they were new sneakers. He was like, you don't have this in blue? I was like, not today. He was like, oh, man, I don't want this. And so somebody else took them. But 
where somebody else doesn't want something, somebody else will yeah, take it. Yeah. So again, overwhelming, yes. Crazy feelings, yes. 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 Wanting to walk away, yes. Yeah. All of that is always there. I believe me, if it was not for the team and the reassurance from some of the people that I have, right. I, I mean, honestly, it's it's very big. Just like I'm sure you go through the same mm. thing because this is not easy. Mm. This is not. And easy. this is a piece of what the brand does, right? Yes. So there's a community service piece and the mentoring, and there's a whole bunch of other things that we do too. But yes, this this is just a piece. Here I just get a chance to cheese <laughs> and just you know have a minute to you know do this. But there's so many other components, and yeah, oftentimes um, you think about it and you're saying. Well, I'm crazy. What am I doing? Right, this for? right, this exactly. Is nuts. Right, nobody, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Right, nobody really appreciates this. I'm using my own resources to, to make this happen. Resources, and, right? And I'm just like, man, I could have been home today. I'm out here, doing this, and then, what happens is you get just that one. Because mm -hmm. I always say, if you touched one, you've touched a thousand. You have. And sometimes you just get that one, and I'm sure I was born. In yesterday, despite everything that was going on, there was one person, if, it was probably more than that, but there was at least one person that really appreciated your organization being out there. You're right. It's one guy, he, I just saw him walking by, and I brought, asked him to come over. He's like, man, somebody just took everything I had. And mm. so I was like, well, come on in. Let's look at you. Let's help you out. So we helped him, you know, with his teeth and everything. Right. And um, they gave him a referral to come down, you know, and help him out with his teeth. And we also gave him another bag, which had supplies in it for a week. Mm -hmm. So we can't give him a place, you know, to replace all his stuff right. or his things. But, you know, just to help out for that week. And if he needs more, he has my number. Mm. So I try to help where I can. Yeah. And we gave him a coat also. He said, oh, my God, I'm so thankful for the yeah, coat. Yeah, yeah. I really needed the coat, even though he has really longer arms than I thought. Mm -hmm. But he was happy for the coat. He was happy for that. Yes, yeah. very happy for the coat. What do, you, what do you need? How can people help you, like the average Joe? Average <laughs> citizens. How can average people just help? How can? What do you need? How can we help you? Well, I have found out that in order to run an organization, a community charity, you need donations. Mm. Donations are and are very important because e the food, even though a lot of stuff is donated, a lot of the time you have to pay people. Yeah. Um, gas, you have storage, you have, and a lot of times you have to buy these things also. Mm. So, you know, donations, even $5, $6, whatever, is fine. Yeah. We And what brought me to... To that is that um, someone said, I can give you money, but I don't, how do you do it? And I was like, well, we have Cash App. I didn't even think about Cash App at first. I was like, is anybody doing Cash yeah. App? I'd never even heard of Cash yeah. App. A millennial told me about <laughs> Cash App. I was like, what's Cash App? Ain't you know, nobody so, PayPal no more. I know, right? It was like, or nobody's actually pulling out plastic cards. Or doing checks. And doing yeah. square. Nobody's doing, doing that. that. No. They're doing Cash App. Yeah. Like, oh, I can Cash App you. I was like, like, right now. Yeah. What's the cash yeah, app? man. You're like, so. Cash App is the easiest thing yeah, to do right okay. now. So we have that. If you look on our Facebook page, um, you'll see the amount of work that we're doing, and you'll see the Cash App app out there as mm -hmm. Kaleidos Charities. Okay. And um, donations are always um, tax deductible. Yes. So, yes. Yes. We appreciate that. Now, do you guys have a schedule of where you're going to be? Like how often? How can people find you out in the streets and doing what you're doing? Do you have like a calendar or we are putting together a calendar. Mm -hmm. Normally, we go out at least twice a month. Okay. To do servicing, either feeding or we doing health care. Okay. Um, what we're doing now is actually putting together a calendar and um, listing it up, mm -hmm. so that people will know where we are. Because again, we've had requests from Gwinnett, from Henry County, um, a lot of different counties doing the South and Conyers to come mm -hmm. out and do these healthcare events, mm -hmm. which I didn't know people were actually looking for that. Yeah. So if we can put those together, that's why we're putting the calendar together, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And um, so everyone will know. No. And also if you, again, look on Facebook, you can always know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So yes. Is the healthcare just for homeless people or can anyone attend? I wouldn't healthcare? turn anyone down. Healthcare so screenings? if you okay. need help, and we're there, we'll get it to come you. Come through, yeah. Yeah, come through, please, because it's like this. If you, if I see you and you're hungry, I have to feed you. 
if you are bleeding or you are, you know, you need something, you're t anything, I have to feed you. If I have the resources, right I cannot it. just say, mm -hmm. no, I can't help you, come back tomorrow. I couldn't sleep like that. Okay. So uh, anyone comes out, they can get served. Mm -hmm. So yes. Mm -hmm. So what, you're going to be out in the streets next month for May? Oh, when was yes. this April? We yeah. are. We are. It seems like you're doing stuff every week. <laughs> it does seem yeah, like that. Yeah, because you, we, you, we are out. I, when I say scheduled, yes, but we are out every, every weekend. Every weekend yeah, you're we're, out. We're we are out there. Feeding and, folks mm -hmm. or providing the packages yes. or something, combination of the both? Yes. we On average, we feed like 200 people every weekend or every other weekend, or especially when we do the health care thing. It's, it's, we all, we're always feeding because that's a big need. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And in doing that, are you in the same vicinity every weekend when you're no. feeding too? We, well, what I try to do is hit different spots. Either I hit over in DeKalb or I hit downtown in Atlanta okay. at Heard Park or Heard Park and we go to the Gwinnett Center over there. Gannett, excuse me. Oh. Garnett. Oh, Garnett. Garnett. Marta Station. Yeah, Garnet. Yeah. <laughs> Garnet. Garnet. Next to the Greyhound. Yeah. Yes, to the Greyhound. And Hound Magic City. City. And Magic City. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a yes. busy, that's a busy it's area. It's very busy because, again, right adjacent to that is Tent City. Yes, it is. Yes. So we go over there, give them the supplies. We have supplies we got to give out. We were just granted, thank God, um, from Mission Continues, um, T-shirts, shoes, underwear, um, and more healthcare um, kits. Mm -hmm. um, we were just approved from United Way for their shoebox program. So Ooh. they're giving us shoeboxes also with um, hygiene kits in there also. Nice. So we're going to pick those up to give out. So again, that goes back to the partnerships. Yeah. And I'm thankful for that because a lot of people need shoes. We had a shoe drive also, mm -hmm. which we gave, um, I think it was 300 pairs of shoes out. And they were new mm -hmm. and i like to say slightly used yes, sneakers yes, yes. i say like, please don't give me something that you wouldn't wear anymore right right you know right. and you're not going to see too many um, homeless people walking around in high heels so i was like sneakers would do better yes i'm yes, not turning yes. them away yeah, but, but you know are sneakers yeah. are better flat shoes yes. and sneakers and yes. that type of thing mm -hmm. wow so. so what's what's next for you guys so you got to you feed people every weekend in different uh, locations people can find you where primarily on Facebook primarily on Facebook and we also have our website which is kalalus.org and I'll spell it because Please. most people are like because you Kalelus? say with ease yeah. does it have a meaning, does it mean Kalelus it? means promised land hmm. that's what this was called before that this is what this was called yeah, okay <laughs> Promised Land. Yes, Promised Land. Mm. So, you know, C-A-L-A-L-U-S. Okay. Most folks think it's calculus, but it's Calalus. Calalus. Yes. Website. Or Cibolus, uh, which is Spanish. So, yeah. What? And okay. the website is, that's the website, okay. right. org, or you can find us on Facebook mm -hmm. at Kalalus Charities or IG, Instagram, excuse me, at Kalalus Cares or Twitter at Kalalus Cares. You're everywhere. I'm trying to be. You're as much everywhere. as possible. You're everywhere, doing doing everything. When are you going to stop doing this? Never. Never. <laughs> Never. Never. I, I don't think it's... Um, Oops. It's okay. Hey. He's trying to get in on it, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I don't think we're going to... Um, I, don't, I don't see any time that we're going to stop because, one, the need is always there. I'm actually trying to do something spread out in D.C. and in um, Jacksonville mm. also. Mm. Um, we have um, a great need there. We have people who are willing to start up. So we're trying to branch out and have the three-quarter thing. Yeah. So if we can do it in D.C., do it here and in Jacksonville. And then once we do that, we help we can start getting the people who are on their feet to start going back and showing the other folks there how to you do go. it. There so you go. We're teaching everybody. Yeah, teach people how to fish. That's right. Yes. So, you know, instead of just giving there. them the fish, you yeah. got to teach them how to fish. Because they might want, you know, salt or they may have, you know, a, um, they might want Cajun on it or they yeah. might want to, you know, what Lowry's or something. Yeah. So we do it a different, I give you the basic plan, but, you know, if you want to spice it up a little bit or you want to change it up a little bit, but you're still staying within the plan, mm -hmm. you know, you can do that. Yeah. So um, I think that we can really move this thing to start mm -hmm. helping people 
in different cities, different states, and make it work. Yeah, I think the thing is that keeps us all humble, and I want people to kind of just remember um, most African-American people are really just one pay paycheck away yes. from being homeless. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is you lose a job, you lose your home for whatever the reasons, no judgment is passed, things happen, life happens. People may be able to take you in and people are not. Right. And then you find yourself, you're in this situation. So I really wanted people to, and I'm glad you were able to come today, because I wanted people to understand the softer side of it because even though the vibration and the attitude of some mm -hmm. are changing, even though our, our political offices um, may have good intentions, maybe not, maybe it's financial gain, there's just a lot of different reasons and variables that people are looking at Atlanta as an opportunity. They are, they are. Um, There's, as we said, prime locations and prime real estate yes. and prime areas and certain demographics are not the best demographic to reside there, to live there. And so things are happening to shift and make changes. I've talked about it several times, um, that you drive in Atlanta and there's constantly something being built, built. And, and risen from the ashes, mm -hmm. from parking lots, from dirt, from this and that. And I say, where are the people coming from? The prices that they're charging, who's making that kind of money? And you have to think about that. Yeah. Where are they coming from? Where are they coming from? Because one, if you notice that Atlanta is what they call the busiest airport. Mm -hmm. You can get to almost anywhere from Atlanta. from Atlanta. So most folks are what they're doing is staying in, you know, their come, mm -hmm. fly out, yeah, and then stay here. Yeah. So if I can commute back and forth, yeah. I don't have to catch two and three planes. I can just stay in Atlanta yeah. and just fly anywhere I want that's to. That's what we do. And that's what they that's why the city is being mm -hmm. Um, built up. It's being built up. Yes. It's like leaps and bounds yes. tremendously, but somebody's got to pay for that. People are paying for that, whether it's through taxes or whatever the case may be. But I wanted people to just kind of understand and still remain hopeful. Right. Um, and still be in a space of giving um, and helping where where we can. Because right. it's because it could be one of us at any given time. It we'll, could we'll be. talk. It could. We'll talk. Because um, life has a way of being life right and things change and so I just I wanted people to understand that there are a lot of different ingredients to what we're seeing Lord knows yes. in this homeless um, population mm -hmm. here in Atlanta and I think that we as um, hum humans we need to keep asking the tough questions we don't have to ask questions right. we have to vote for the right people in office we have to continue to challenge and push that needle to understand what's going on because um, a question I was going to ask, but it, it it appears that when you see a lot of homeless people, they look just like me. They look just like me and you. And I'm You're like, right. oh, that that is far from cool. Exactly. When we go down the feed, mm -hmm. now, again, perfect example, when we were, the first time I went down, we fed at 167. Right. Um, 165 were, looked like us, African American. Um, when we go down to, we pass out the hygiene kits, maybe, maybe 10 mm. are white. Yeah. You know, and, and again, I'm just saying it is what it is. Right. You know, you can't look at it as a point where, you know, oh, this just happened because they're just down or they're not looking for a job or right. they, right. you know, stuff happens. You know, it's it's just a plethora of things that could yeah. go wrong at any second. You know, mm -hmm. hey, your lights might get cut off. Or, um, what did you say, you're facing a divorce or your spouse has left. Now you find yourself without a house. Yeah. You know, you'll sit in that house for a long time, and mm -hmm. then uh, sooner or later, um, Bank of America or whomever is going to come knocking at the door. Say, yeah, and go. here it's 90 days. Okay. So you, it's, it's not like in Florida, which is nine months and stuff like that. In Connecticut, it takes over a year. To get people out. To get people out, yeah. Mm. Especially you can't do it in the wintertime up there. Mm. But um, It's cruelty. It's cruelty. Mm. Yeah, so 90 days in 90 Atlanta. Days. And you're out. And your world can change. Out like a light. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a serious thing. It is. It's it a is. serious it's thing. Insane. And it is an overwhelming um, sensation. It Overwhelming, I would say, is 
an easy way to put it because you have a lot of people who commit suicide. You have a lot of people who actually lose it. You know, um, it's a big pressure that's on you because, one, you have so many other people res res um, that you're responsible for. Right. You have kids, your kids that you might be responsible for. You have other family members that you may be responsible for. You may have a, um, a parent that's living with you. Yes. And what do you do? Yes. You know, how do you continue that normalcy, as we were saying earlier, mm -hmm. and you know that you're about to get kicked out or yeah. you know that you're about to lose your house. And then once you lose your house, how do you explain to your mother or your kids that we're living in the, mm. the van for a while, mm. you know, or I got to let you stay with the aunt, but the aunt should let all of us stay in, but I'm not going to say, you know, but, you know, yeah, it is what it is. That That's happens. another part of it, yeah. you know, so. It's a lot. Yeah, breathe it in. Take yes, it in, yes. Osborne. <laughs> let it out your nostrils. You're doing a great know, work. Right? Let's You're doing zen, a great right? work. I want us to partner. I'm going to see where the old... Real Chicks Rock brand came to line, especially with women. Of course. Especially because those numbers are high. Very high. Very high. Very and, high. And that brings me to a something I just thought about. When you talk about women, a lot of women have experienced traumatic events Ooh. who are homeless. You think about it. They've been, um, what's the word I want to use, um, accosted by a family member. Mm. Or they've been, you know, Something's happened to them in that type of situation that now they are not there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know a couple of people who have experienced that, yeah. you know, and that's traumatic. Yeah. A lot of people push it back, and once it finally comes out, mm -hmm. they lose it. They'll mm -hmm. see that person, that family member that has bothered them or mm -hmm. touched them in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And then they can't function, and they say, oh, she's just crazy. Yeah. You know, because we don't believe that we need, I'm not going to say we. A lot right. of times black society doesn't believe that they need um, to talk to anyone yeah. about their problems. Yeah. And that's just not true. Mm. I know I had to talk to somebody about my problems when I had my accident. Yeah. So, but it's, um, women really, and I'm not going to say it's just women, but there are a lot of women out there that need help. Right. And they've been, it's just they go through so much. You talk about trafficking, then once they break away, then, of course, what are they going to do? They have yeah. no place to go. Yeah. You have no place to go. So it's like, even with children, you have um, like 50,000 right now, I counted, um, looking up some stats again, but who's taking the numbers, right. of homeless children because they left the house because mm. either some type mm -hmm. of abuse, mm -hmm. or some type of, um, not only abuse, physical, or sexual, and mental mm. abuse that's going on. Yeah. Once you're out there, then what do you do? Yeah. You're, you're actually in your beholden to what's out there. And you have people who are predators who look for mm -hmm. new people yep. who are out there. What's that word? Because they don't know what to do. They think you're your friend, and they're actually trying to use you as yeah. to pimp you out or something like mm -hmm. that. That's so horrible. It is. It is. It's a lot of work to be done, Osborne. It's a lot of work, but again, I think that as a community, we can pull it together. We can do it? We can do it. We have to do it. We can't just think about now. we got to start looking and planning for this gotcha. you know we got our kids so we have to start thinking Come about it. we got to our kids the, the, okay in order for us to make it better for us when we get older we have to make sure that they are taken care of now yes raise them up right, right. even if it, like that population i was talking about that drops out right. those kids even though they're some people may see them as bad apples hell let's make some applesauce out of it <laughs> You know, it still tastes good. I mean, a lot of people don't like applesauce, but it's kind of still, you yeah, know, you can deal yeah, with it. You, you can, can work with it. Yeah. So everything has purpose. Everything has purpose. Even with down the street, you have Solomon's House. Mm -hmm. That's a women's shelter mm -hmm. that we, you know, gave to and stuff like that. And they're doing great work over there, too. Nice. It's nice. really, really a lot of people out there trying to help. And I think that, again, I'm not saying men don't need help, but I think that it's a big epidemic when you talk about women children who've been abused and the reason that they're on the street mm. it's not just because they want to be on the street Heck, they want to get away from what's actually happening to yeah them. yeah you know, a kid doesn't know what to do except for their friend tell them let's run away because they their friend may be going through the same thing mm -hmm. so yes man awesome awesome work thank you for coming Thank you for having me yeah you got a lot you got a lot going on you got a lot of good things going on um just giving back and just i want to just wish you nothing but continued success success and everything that you do because it's a lot of work yes um donations are needed 
Donations Please, are needed, and he'll know what to do with the money. Don't you worry about what he's going to do with the $5 or the dollar that you donate because he's going to need it for transportation and food and um, hygiene kits and just everything, everything. Check him out. Know what he's doing. Please do. You know, yeah, this guy is an upstanding citizen here. He's a nonprofit. And believe me, I don't even monitor. I don't, I'm not in control of the money. So I make sure that the money goes where it needs to go. I know, that's right. So, because you're not going to get me on a. Um, no, we're not going to get you on nothing. Because you you're know? not doing anything you're not supposed to do. Everything that you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You said, yeah. You're doing the right we thing. Start, and yeah. so for that, we commend you. So for me, hey, hi. Hi, guys. Yes, we've had a wonderful conversation. Amazing. Listen, so listen, I got to plug in some things because um, it's that time of year. Yeah, I'm coming with you, Annette. I'm coming, Ned. I'm coming. But first, I got to talk about, um, he talked about a lot about partnerships. I have one. I have, I have a few. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a strategic partner. Yes, I do. And it is uh, with Hot Ice Live Entertainment. Yeah, all we're right. going to lighten things up. I know. That's right. You yes. in between all that working, you need to get out and have a good time every now and then. Every so now and then. we have some things coming up at Vekman's, yes, in the city, living for the city, the, the Stevie Wonder tribute, right? So that's happening Saturday, May 4th uh, at 930. So you need to hurry up and get your ticket for this one because it's going to be good. These tribute shows typically sell out. Standing room only. We want to see you in the place. So you come and be a part of that that night. Yeah, you need to come and unwind it. Roger that. Do that. I think I you will. You know, bring your wife and come through and have a wonderful time for that. Then we slide on. But before we do the <coughs> night, because I got another, excuse I, me. another partnership. Yeah, yeah. Tambor. Tambor, you guys always, you know that you know that I love house music. And so I'm... Yes, clap for the DC, house music. DC, house music. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So it's been, uh, Tambor is celebrating 10 years. I've been honored to be a part of Tambor for five. And so we're having the grounding party the same day on uh, May 4th, right, on All the right. Beltline. It's free. It's free for family. It's family, fun, free. Come on out. It's a free event. We'll be by the skate park. Um, it's going to start at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and it'll go till about 8. Then you go home, you shower, you come out that night, you party it with us all night. Roger so that. it's a full day. May 4th is a very full day. So for that, you know, go ahead and do that. I got another person that was a previous guest of mine, uh, Nani Walker. She has mm. what I like to consider. We have been talking about health and wellness, yes. and the conversation was really about traditional medicine or traditional health versus um, energy, wellness, and that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's holistic. Yeah, yes. very holistic. And so, you know, a lot of people are starting to gauge and pivot and turn and get more of that in their life. I agree. Um, they've, they're finding that that is just as helpful as the traditional practice of medicine yes, and that type is. of thing. Yes, it is. So join my friend, Nani Walker. She's having a live class at 9 p.m. on 424 mm. and talking about your womb is magic. It's an intro to womb wellness and care. And, you know, to our point, we were talking about women and a lot of trauma and things that they yes. go through. You know, hopefully this type of class or this type of conversation will help uh, women deal with some of the trauma, some of the experiences, or just the illnesses that they carry, yes. and they don't realize that they're carrying it. So feel free to register for this online. Again, it's this week. It's uh, 424, the date. It's going to be at 9 p.m. Uh, again, your womb is your magic. All the details are here. If you want more, feel free to inbox me, and we'll talk about that more. But yes, we have a lot of things going on. But last but not least, somebody that's very special to me as well, uh, we talked about teams, right? Yes. Um, and the person that works with me is uh, Sean Williams, and she's incredible. Um, that email invitation and yes, letter you get yes. and say, Sean helps me <laughs> keep Real Chicks Rock going. And so when you have people that have a dream and a passion for their own, you got to support them. You have to. So, you, you know, to. who would I be if I didn't give Sean an opportunity to just um, use my platform to promote um, teen wellness and teen empowerment? Because teens, to your point, we're talking about young people. Um, they have a lot of decisions that they have to make. They do. And so we want to kind of empower them, especially our young girls. We want them to understand what their rights are and how to date and how to be engaged with different people and just kind of maneuver through life as best as they can. As best as they can. So Sean has a workshop coming up. It's called oh, Teen cool. Girls Empowerment Workshop. We had a successful one uh, last month. We're going to have another one in May. I say we because I'm a strategic partner. 
partner. I like being a part of things that yes. help um, change the lives of many people. So you guys stand by and listen to this commercial, this promo coming right up. Cool beans. Don't miss out on this great event. Be a part of our Teen Girls Empowerment Workshop Series, a series that aims to motivate, inspire, and empower our teen girls. Our next interactive hands-on workshop is Saturday, May 18th, 2019, at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is an affirmation-based event that incorporates wellness strategies to promote self-love and body positivity, presented by Aisha Gaines, founder of Affirm On The Go, and her team of phenomenal women. Tickets are on sale at Eventbrite. For more information, go to TeenGirlsEmpowermentExpo.org or connect with us at Teen Girls Empowerment Inc. on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> so there you go. So that's all my announcements for today. Again, thank you, Osborne, for coming. I appreciate you. Thank you for you. inviting me. How can people find you? One more time. Best way to find me is through Kalelus.org mm -hmm. or Facebook at Kalelus Charities okay. or Instagram at um, Kalelus Cares. And I'll spell it again. Yes, please and thank you. <laughs> it's C-A-L-A-L-U-S, which, again, means promised land. So... Okay. Yes. Well, thank you for your time. That's it. That's it for me. You know where to find me. I am everywhere. I'm at realchicksrock.com, the website. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm here every first and third Sunday. Listen, you like this show. You know that you do. So why don't just subscribe. Just subscribe. go on and subscribe to us on YouTube. We're on iTunes. Yeah, we're on the On Channel. We're on um, Urban Music Report, you know, loading down apps, doing all that. Listen, you didn't catch everything that we talked about today. You want to hear it again? There was other shows that you missed. Osborne is going to go back and listen to the Don Tallman, uh, Julie McKnight show I had last week, you yes, know, two I weeks am. ago. Yes, I am. Because everybody likes the intro to the show. So Love it. Listen, so go and subscribe to the channel. Slide this in somebody's life on the DMs, like, Promote it, push it out. We love Ratchet, but you know we gotta <laughs> we gotta do better with good content, we got like to. and get it yeah. out there. So help me raise the vibration. That's my time. Thank you. Until next time, you continue to take care. Rock on. Bye.